All right, so we are going to begin with some review for calculus. Um, we're going to do a number of videos on pre-calculus review, starting with a quick review of the set of real numbers. Okay? So this notation, this sort of uh, bold-faced R, you've probably seen before to denote this set of real numbers. Um, and you've probably seen in high school some discussion of different ways that you can interpret the real numbers. Right? Um, so one of the interpretations that you might have seen is, you know, well, okay, so first of all, your, your natural numbers are in there, right? Your natural numbers, your integers, so you include the, the negatives, those are also in there, right? Your rational numbers, those are in there. And by the way, these sets, they also have, um, they also have symbols, just like R, right? Um, the natural numbers. The integers are typically denoted with a Z. Rational numbers, R is already taken, so we use Q for quotient, okay? So we have, we have all of these, and, but that's not everything, right? Um, so the rash, the, we know that there are irrational numbers like pi and E and the square root of two, right? So you throw in all the irrational numbers as well. And, and so basically, we can think of, you know, you start with all these numbers, and then you also sort of throw in, you know, any sort of number that you can write with a decimal expansion, right? So it might be like a natural or number or an integer where there is nothing after the decimal place. Uh, it might be a rational number where you have either a terminating or a repeating uh, decimal expansion. But it might be something like an irrational number, like square root of 2 or pi, where the decimal expansion goes on forever, never terminates, never repeats. This is one way that people will think about rational numbers, is just in terms of, of decimal expansions. Uh, another interpretation that you've probably seen is this sort of idea of a number line, right? So we think of the, ra the real numbers as this, you know, the set of all points on this, on this number line that goes on forever in either direction. Somewhere in the middle is zero with positive numbers on this side, negative numbers on this side, right? And we think of this as the sort of continuous line. There's no gaps or breaks or anything in it. And every point on the line gives you a real number. OK, so that's fine. That's one way to think about it. Um, the way that mathematicians actually think about the real numbers is we usually think of real numbers in terms of uh, properties. Okay? And I'm not going to list all of the properties, but there are quite a few of them. There are the algebraic properties. Algebraic um, properties. So these are, are specifying all the rules for how addition and multiplication behave, right? So, so these are all the rules like, you know, the commutative property which says that A plus B is the same thing as B plus A, right? Um, the distributive property, so as an example, we would have the fact that if you do A times B plus C, that's the same thing as AB plus AC, right? That's known as the distributive property. It's key to doing things like factoring and multiplying out polynomials, right? Um, the FOIL rule that you probably know um, comes from this distributive property. So there are all these algebraic properties telling you how basically, you know, how to manipulate real numbers, how to solve equations. That's the algebraic side of things. Um, but there are also order properties. Now, the, the ordering has to do with this number line picture, right? Real numbers are ordered from left to right, right? There's this idea of increasing order. Um, and there's sort of built in here, there's sort of a notion of, of size. This idea that we can talk about one real number being bigger than another, right? And in fact, um, mathematicians would say that the real numbers are totally ordered, right? So given any two real numbers, you can decide which one is bigger than the other, right? Um, given any three, you can put them in order, right? S you know, small, medium, big, right? So you can, any set of real numbers, you can always put them in order, right? They're, 
there isn't anything kind of different tracks that things might go on. There's just one single straight line, um, right? Increasing size. Um, so we have all those order properties which come up when you're trying to, let's say, solve inequalities, things like that. So this is going to pop up again later, so we won't, we won't spell everything out now. Um, the, the last one is, I think, the, the hardest one. It's kind of the key property of the real numbers because um, the rational numbers, for example, have all the same algebraic properties that the real numbers have. They have all the same order properties that the real numbers have, okay? But they don't have this continuum property. And there are a number of different ways of, of saying what the continuum property is. Um, they, all of them kind of go beyond what we would do in a first calculus course, though, and they get more into what you might see in an upper division analysis course. Um, so one, one way to think about what the continuum property means is that it kind of gets back to this, this decimal idea. So every um, possible decimal expansion produces a real number. Um, the, the precise statement of this would be, would be stated in terms of, of sequences and series, something you probably won't see until your second or third course in calculus. Um, but we know that this is not true for rational numbers, right? Um, so there are lots of decimal expansions that don't correspond to rational numbers because if the expansion doesn't terminate and it doesn't repeat, you don't have a rational number. Um, Another way to phrase this continuum property um, is, is there's also something uh, you could put it in terms of what are called least upper bounds. But that's not something that we want to get into. Okay, so there's another way to describe it in terms of least upper bounds. Um, so these are all things to keep in mind um, when you're studying the real numbers. And, and maybe the main thing to keep in mind is that um, Truly understanding the real numbers, um, actually having a definition of what it means for something to be a real number, is beyond what we do in a calculus course. Despite the fact that everything we do in calculus depends on the real number system, right? The, the playground for calculus is, is the set of real numbers, and yet we don't actually have a solid definition of, of what a real number is. And the reason is that the real numbers are actually pretty hard to define. And it's not something that we're going to try to do in this course, right? Once you've got some comfort, um, you know, with functions, with limits, um, with, with calculus, then you're in a position where you can actually start talking about what a real number is. How would you define one? Um, what are the properties? Uh, it turns out that this is actually a fairly advanced topic. Um, so don't worry if you never quite feel like you know exactly what a real number is, because that's something that will come later on in your mathematical career.